For he's mighty, he's mighty, and he's awesome, awesome. For he's holy, he's holy, for he's holy, for he's holy, and he's awesome, awesome. He's great, for he's great, for he's great. to this place and I believe that he is here to meet a need in this place I believe that God has come here this morning and knew you would be here this morning he is awesome in this place there is nothing that God cannot accomplish in your life if you will allow him to do so and that's the key is you have to allow God to do the work that needs to be done you have to step out of the way Get off the throne and allow God to take his rightful place in your life. Father, I ask you, Lord, right now that God, in this place, there is a soul that is searching for you. God, in this place, there is a heart that is broken. God, in this place, God, there is a struggle and there is a battle going on in someone's life. Father, I ask you, Lord, all through this service, that, God, you will lay your hands upon them because, God, you are an awesome God. And Father, I thank you and I praise you. And God, I know that miracles are going to show in this place. And Father, I give you the glory and God, I give you the praise because God, we're not here to worship man. We're here to worship you. And we're, we're here to give you all the glory and all the praise because God, we want you first in our life. And God, we thank you and God, we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, 
Amen. Will you turn to somebody you didn't come here with? Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. It's good to have all of you here in the house of the Lord. I'm just so glad to see you. I don't know if you know this today, but today Brother Calvin turns 70 years old. So y'all give him a hand clap. Amen. And he's not ashamed one single bit. He is, he is excited to be 70 years old, and I'm excited for him because I didn't know when you turn 70, you get two birthdays, one before it and one after it. Man, I'm looking forward to it. Amen? Amen. I'm hoping I'm doing as good as Brother Calvin when I turn 70. Amen? He's doing excellent. So it's good to have all of you in the house of the Lord. And we're going to come to, we're, we've come to the part of the service where we get to worship God in our giving and our tithes and our offering. You know, it, it's a point of time that we get to give to God. And how, how many of you ready to worship God with your giving? Amen? If I can get my ushers to come on up to the front and we're going to worship God. We're going to lift it up, and we're just going to be able to praise it and, and to give God glory for it. So if you will, just stand to your feet, and we're just going to say the prayer over the offering, if you're ready. Because it is seed sowing time, seed -sowing time. In, the Church of God. in the Lennox Church of God. And I'm believing God for, believing God for jobs, and jobs. jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, raises and bonuses. benefits, sales, and commissions. Finding money, Finding money. Royalties, received. royalties received, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Bills, are paid off. bills are paid off, sick bodies are healed, bodies are healed. Lost, family are lost family members are saved, and revival, and revival. In, the in the Lennox Church of God. That's why I'm glad. That's why I'm, glad. I'm downright happy, I'm happy. that it's seed sowing time, seed -sowing time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hold up. Don't go nowhere. Sit down. I forgot something. That prayer still stands, but I forgot something. This morning, I want to do two things. Because this morning is your regular tithes and offering, but we also have a brother that's been in here and a sister that has been faithful to the church that are going through some things that they didn't expect to be going through. We all know that Brother Dayton last Sunday, or it was last two Sundays ago, had open heart surgery all of a sudden. An infection got into his valve and ate up his, uh, his, his artery, his, his, the valve that was going into his artery. And they had to go in and put a metal valve into his artery, which took him out of work. And Sister Carrie is having to you don't understand all the medications that they're having to, to take. And he's, he's, one medication takes two hours. Another medication takes 20 minutes to give through a shot. Uh, all of his medications after insurance is $223 a week right now through the antibiotics and everything that he's having to, to go through. So I, I've made this decision, and with the council's approval, we made this decision that we are going, if you will give, and if, you, and if you're in here and you want to give to Brother, Brother Dayton, if you have cash, put it in an envelope, mark it Brother Dayton. If you have a check, mark down at the bottom, Dayton. But what we're going to do is, is we're going to match, the church is going to match whatever you give. So if you give up to, a, I, I'm going to say this, if you give up to $1,000, we're going to match up to $1,000. So I want to I challenge you this morning to search your heart, and to, and to pour it out. Because when we have a brother or a sister, it's, it's our duty to help them not struggle. Now, we also have some different things that his, his brother 
has come up with. There's a raffle that we're going to do also, and we're going to be included on that, and we're going to do that as well. But this morning is our chance to take care of our brothers and sisters. So I want you to search your heart this morning as you give. And if you have the ability to give extra to Brother Dayton and them, I want you to do so, okay? And, and, it, and, and it's strictly up to you because you know what your capabilities are. But understand that he's going to be out of work for, for a month or several months trying to recover. His job is stable. He has no, no problems with his job. They have it open. It's ready for him to come back. But in the meantime, both him and Sister Carrie are having to take care of each other, and he's having to take, she's having to make sure that medications are getting put in him. He's wearing a port, um, and, and he's having, he's back there this morning. Praise God. Will you give him a hand clap? He's back there. But I, I do want to stress to you that neither one of them have asked for anything. They do want to thank you from the bottom of their heart for all the food that you've brought uh, for everyone that's brought food this week and the last week. They thank you. But I want you to understand that neither one of them have asked. I've asked several times, what can we help you with? What can we help you with? And they both say, we're good. And I know they're good, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pour out into them because they're a part of us. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So if you will this morning while we're giving, if you've got something, just drop it into the bag and it'll go, it'll go to them. They have an account set up, and if you don't have anything now, there's an account set up right down here at the Trust Bank in Dayton, and, and I think it's Dayton and Charlene's name. Uh, down here, at the, I know it's in Dayton's name. You can deposit anything into that bank, and it'll go into that, that account, okay? Make sure you mark what they're dropping in the offer. I already told them that. I love you. Oh, Lord, we're going to have to pray through this. She said, get away from me. Amen. All right, let's give. Praise the Lord. Father, bless this offering in Jesus' name. Before they, before they get to the singing the last song, what do y'all think about the, the God first? Everybody okay with that? Hey, it's awesome. I want to thank, thank Douglas Metal and I also want to thank Brian Stone for, for donating the sign. Um, what an awesome job uh, Douglas Metal did in doing that. And, and I thank Brian Stone for donating the sign. Now, he did charge me for the wood, so I don't thank him for that. But I do thank him for the... <laughs> God bless you.
praise you this morning God Lord once again we come into your presence Father Lord to give you glory to give you praise and Father we thank you for what you're doing in our life God right now Father have your way in this place and God I just ask you to touch us this morning Father Lord let your glory just shine in this place and let your spirit and your 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 presence be felt and here God just surround us this morning and God, I give you the glory, and God, I give you the praise for all that you're about to do in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Will you give him a big hand clap of praise? Amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, it's so good to be in the presence of God this morning. I don't see much green this morning, but I want to show you I've got green on, just in case you want to know, okay? Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Last week we were in the mountains with our teenagers. Praise God we're back here at the church. Amen. I've learned one thing from being with teenagers. I'm not one. Amen. 12 o'clock is way past my bedtime. And my eyes know it and so does my body. Amen. If you will, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, first and second verse. Then flip over to Genesis chapter 15 and starting with the first verse. So Genesis chapter 12 will be first. How many of us know that when God promises something, if God said it, we'll, we'll receive it? But not on your time. That's the one thing that we've got to realize is God doesn't work on your schedule. He doesn't care what your schedule is because your schedule does not interfere with God's schedule. He doesn't care what you got to do today. He doesn't care where you got to go today. He does, it doesn't matter to him. As long as we put him first, everything's going to work out the way it needs to work out. Because the Bible tells me that if I, if I put God first, everything else is going to fall into place. I don't have to worry about anything, but I've got to realize that God does not work on our timetable. Amen? Let's start reading in Genesis 12, chapter 1, or verse 1. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country. Get out from your family. Get out from your father's house. And go to the land that I'm going to show you. I'm going to make your, you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Skip over to Genesis chapter 15 if you've got it marked. Sorry, I had to make an adjustment. Genesis chapter 15 says, And these things, 
After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Do not be afraid. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. What is exceedingly means it goes above and beyond your expectations. Exceedingly great. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go child? Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward the heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, he said, so shall be your descendants. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word. God, I ask you, Father, Lord, that you would just use me. And, Father, that you will just let your word come forth, their ears be receptive. And, Father, their hearts receive and open, Father. And, Lord, just clear our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Clear our hearts and minds to receive your word. Whatever's going on on the outside of this church, whatever's going on in our, in our private lives, Father, let us put it on hold for just one 30-minute time. And God, that we can hear your word, receive your word, and walk into your word, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for all that you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Wednesday night, I taught about receiving the word. It's not just good enough to come into the church and hear the word. Everybody can hear the word, but you've got to receive the word. I used the, the explanation of driving down the road, and when my wife starts talking to me, I hear the word. If you can turn the monitors down. I hear the word, but sometimes I don't receive the word. And when I don't receive the word, I usually get a book upside my head. Okay, I'm lying. But I do get a look, and it's almost like a book goes upside my head. Because it's like, you're not paying attention. I heard you. Well, tell me what I said. Well, I can't because I didn't receive it. See, a lot of times we come into the church and we hear the word, but we don't receive the word. And if you don't receive it, hearing it doesn't do anything for you. Because a lot of people walk out of church on Sunday because they didn't receive it. They have an awful Monday. If you were to receive the word and walk in the word, then you will have a better Monday, a greater Tuesday. Not only that, rehearse the word. This morning, I want to talk to you about how many of us have just settled because we haven't really understood what the word said. See, God promised us great things were going to happen. God promised us blessings and favor. God promised us that things were going to come in our way. He promised Abram. Abram turned into Abraham. Sarai turned into Sarah. They, their names changed. God blessed them and changed their whole being, and they became new people. But how many of us get to a point to where we get so tired of waiting on God to bless us that we just settle for whatever comes our way? You believed at one point, or another, perhaps that God was going to do something amazing in your life. You believed in faith. You had faith. You had faith in miracles, and you were believing for a movement of God in your life. You were believing that this year is going to be the year that barriers are going to fall, that life is going to change, that things are going to get better. You had faith and you were believing in a movement of God. You, you read the old book and the prayer of Jabez and you prayed the prayer, God enlarge my territory. God bless me in many ways. You, be, you use me, God, make a big difference in somebody's life. But then life just kept on happening. Not much went down in your spiritual life. You started to settle when it came to spiritual things. And now since you haven't seen God do anything significant in a long time in your life, maybe you're just willing to settle for the consolation prize. God, just do something. Just do anything, God. You know, I got to tell you, church, that this morning, if you're one of those that have been settling, that this message 
is written specifically for you this morning. If you've gotten to a place where you've prayed and you've prayed and no answer has come and you finally come to a place where you just settle for whatever comes your way because you think that's as good as I'm ever going to get, then this message is for you because I want you to know that if God said it, that it will happen. Hold on to it and rehearse it every single day until it happens. There's something called push, pray until something happens. Don't stop because you may stop at the moment that it's about to happen. You may settle at the second that it's about to turn around. You may give in before it comes. What if he wouldn't have dipped seven times in the water, just six? He would have missed everything that was going to happen. What if Abram... Abraham wouldn't have walked all the way up the mountain. He would just said, this is ridiculous. I can't walk all the way up here. What am I doing this for? God, you can get me at the bottom of the mountain. Why do I have to walk up to the top of the mountain? Why? Because God wants to know your faith. He wants you to know your faith, and he wants you to believe in your own self. A lot of times, we don't have faith in us. It's not that we don't have faith in God. We don't have faith in our ability to accomplish what God has set in us to accomplish. We don't believe in us. We, it's not that we don't have faith in God. We've got plenty of faith in God. It's not the God problem. It's the self problem because you've got such a dim view of your own self because you believed in everything everybody else has said about you. You're not worth anything. You'll never make anything of yourself. You're not educated enough. You can't speak well enough. You'll never go anywhere in life. You've believed in that stuff so much that, it, that it's planted a seed inside of you. And how many of you know that one seed can make a big difference? Yes, You've allowed that seed to be planted into your heart. See, maybe you're looking for a godly man or a godly woman. Maybe you've prayed and said, God, bring somebody by. God, help me with this or help me with that and all of a sudden you just get so tired of waiting anybody that passes by you just say hey that must be the one because you're you want it to happen maybe you've prayed for kids maybe maybe you've prayed that your business is going to start maybe you've prayed and you've built a machine maybe 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 you've asked god for this and you you want ex, extra skills to do this maybe you want god to do this and you're looking at big dreams but then it comes down to it and you say well god just help me get a, a job to, just to pay the rent you've gotten to a place to where you've given up on god and you're settling for less than god's very best don't settle for less because God said it. It's coming your way. And I promise there's a barrier that's coming down. I promise there's a breakthrough going to happen. I promise that you'll see your, your kids and your spouses saved if you'll just hold on and you'll just wait for it to come. A healing is coming your way. One day I'm going to be a great parent. I'm going to read books to my kids. I'm going to sing Kumbaya and do a family daily devotion. And all of them are going to sit around me and just, oh. Then you settle one day and say, God, just help me not kill them. <laughs> You're laughing, but you lowered your expectation <laughs> of what God might do. See, the whole point through this message, I want you to remember this line. You have no idea what God may produce through a single seed that is planted in faith. You have no idea what God may produce through a single seed that is planted in faith. In the Old Testament, the story about Abraham and Sarah which their original names were different, but they were changed. They had a dream just like other couples, and their dream was to have children, but unfortunately for them, they could not conceive children. 
Some of you been there. You had a dream, but for some reason, you could not birth the dream. Maybe it was children. Maybe it was finances. Maybe it was a, a, a business you wanted to start. You had a dream, but for some reason, you couldn't birth the dream. You couldn't get it to happen. You, 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 you couldn't just get it out there. See, everybody, everybody else is having a dream. And everybody else's dream is coming true. Everybody else is, getting, is, is having a child. Everybody else is doing this. Everybody else is doing that, but not you. We do everything we can to birth the dream. We go to class. We paint the nursery. But still, everybody else gets it, but you don't get it. But for some reason, Abram and Sarah cannot get pregnant. They were devastated. And then God speaks to them and challenges them to take a massive step in faith. In Genesis 12 and 2, he said, get out of your country. Leave your limitations. Get out from the borders that are holding you captive. From your family, from your father's house. Man, I just got a vision that God gave me. There's some of us that are allowing those that are closest to us limit us and not be able to expand on the dream that God has planted in our heart. Some of us have allowed the naysaying speaking of those that are around us to limit us to what we can do and the ability that we have in God. We get this dream just like Joseph got this dream. I'm going to be great. I'm going to be a king. God already showed me that I'm going to be over you. And I'm going to, I want you guys to know who God's going to, you ain't going to do nothing. Who do you think you are? You're going to be over me. Who do you think you are that God gave? you a dream we'll make sure that dream don't happen we're going to do everything we can to destroy the dream that God has given to you but they couldn't destroy the dream of God they put him in a pit they sold him into slavery they locked him up in jail but his dream was still alive and he was still able to accomplish because he never gave up on the dream that God had given to him if God gave you a dream don't give up on that dream God told Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. God says, I'm going to do this. God didn't say, Abraham, you're going to do this. God says, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do to you. And this is what God's telling you he's going to do in your life it doesn't take you getting in the way of anything move out of the way be obedient to God and let him do what he says he's going to do they hear this and immediately Abraham and Sarah know there it is God said it it's gonna happen we're going to be parents. We've waited for 90 years. We're going to be parents. It's the news they have been waiting on. God has pr promised us so we know that if God said it, it's coming. They start picking out names. They start picking out nursery themes. They take part of their tent and block it off as a nursery. How are we going to tell everyone what God has blessed us with? I want you to understand something. They praised God before she even got pregnant. They were giving God glory, and she hadn't even got pregnant yet. They were getting ready for the blessing, and she didn't even show signs of having a child. I'm telling you something. If God showed you something, if God has given you a blessing, you need to go ahead and do a dress rehearsal and get ready for the blessing to be delivered into your life. You want to have faith in God? Then get ready for it because it's coming. Only if you dress for it. They was worshiping God and they didn't even, God already said it, it's coming. The blessing is on its way. We're going to have a child. We're going to be, he's going to make the child great. He's going to make us great. We're going to bless them and we're going to just continue to let the church grow. But how are they going to tell everybody? Abraham and Sarah 
They waited one month. No baby. They waited the next month. No baby. No big deal. God's word is true. He's just giving us a minute to prepare. No biggie. The next month is going to be the month. Still no baby. 120 months passed by before the signs that the baby was coming. But in that 120 months, can you imagine how stretched their faith may have gotten? We know it got stretched because Abraham, Abraham went out and Sarah concocted a scheme to make the, the child. See, they got so tired of waiting, they said, well, maybe we're supposed to go out and do it. Maybe because he told us about it, we're supposed to go and make this happen. Well, okay, we'll, we'll make this happen. And they went out and had a child, but that child wasn't a blessing because God says, I'm going to do it, not you, I am. So you can try to manufacture the blessing, but if it didn't come from God, it's not a blessing that's going to last. It's not going to be stable. Well, I can go out and get this, or I can do this, and I can make this, but I'm telling you, if God didn't give it to you, it's not a permanent blessing. It's only a temporary blessing. When God blesses you, you're going to know it, and so is everybody else. In Genesis 15, he says, but sometime later, the Lord speaks to Abraham. I don't know how much time went through Genesis 12 to 15, but it says sometime later. It, it had to be at least a decade that had passed. And the Lord spoke to Abraham in a vision, and he said to him, do not be afraid, Abraham, for I will protect you and reward you, and it's going to be great. But Abraham replied, Lord, what good are all these blessings? I don't even have a son. What good is all that you're giving me when I don't even have someone I can give after I die? I don't even have a son, God. Some of us this morning have our own version of this story. I don't know what it is, but you have a goal. God knows that you're up. You're going to help us pay off that first credit card by the summer. Summer comes and there's more on the card. Where are you, God? God, hear my prayer. My daddy's going to get saved and a year goes by and your daddy is meaner than he's ever been before. Where are you, God? God, by next Christmas, by next Christmas, I will at least be dating that person, and then that person will be my spouse. Next Christmas comes, and you haven't been within 10 feet of someone of the opposite sex that is remotely attracted to you. God, where are you at? Did you hear me? Was it you? Did you forget about me, God? God, are you even there? How many of us have gotten to the place to where we say, God, are you even there? God, do you even hear what I'm saying? Do you even hear? Are my prayers even reaching you, God? Lord, just give me a son. From Abram's point of view, nothing was happening. There was a promise and a lot of time, but no evidence of God working during that time. Instead of being a father of many nations, I'm going to lower my expect expectations and say, God, just give me a son, just any son. I came to tell you this morning what God has promised you, what God is working on, that you don't see, you have no idea of what God is about to do in your life because you have been faithful, because you have stuck through it, 
because you have gone through the struggle, because you have faced the trial, because you have walked over the enemy, because you have defeated the, 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 the bad stuff that is going on in your life. You have no idea of what God is about to do in your life because I want to tell you that he has tried everything that he can try to stop you from believing in the dream. But God gave you the dream. And at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place, God is going to pour out a blessing on you that is not only going to be for you, but it is going to touch those that are around you. When he told Abraham, you're going to have a son, but not just any ordinary son. Your son is going to be a, a great, great person, and you are going to wind up being the father of many nations. Do you know that the Bible says that if you are a believer in Christ, that you are the seed of Abraham? Abraham, that you are one of his descendants, that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, that if you've accepted Jesus Christ, he is the father of many nations. We can see it now, but he couldn't see it then because he was looking through his eyes and not God's eyes. The problem that we have is that we're looking through our own eyes and not God's eyes. We're seeing what God is not doing, but we're not seeing what God really is doing. He's making a way through for you through the hard places. He's making your roads straight. He's leveling out the hills and the valleys. Before you even get to the problem, God has already worked out the solution. Before you even get to the place that you're going, God has already been there and he has already worked out everything on your behalf. The only thing that you face is what God knows that you are capable of facing you have to believe in your own self it's not only do we have faith in God but God has faith in you God has a trust and a faith in you because he built you and he knows you are capable of facing what is coming your way. And the blessing is right through the, the dark places, right through the hard places. He said, I'm going to lead you to the green pastures, to the still waters. But he also says, I'm going to be with you through the valley of the shadow of death. On the other side of the valley, I picture the green pastures, but you're going to have to go through the valley to get to the green pastures. When it comes to faith, when it comes to life, when it comes to God's blessings, we tend to add, but God multiplies. 10 plus 10 is 20. I'm good, ain't I? But 10 times 10 is 100. I got a Baker High School education from Baker, Louisiana, just in case you want to know, praise the Lord. When you add, you get a little. But God don't add. God multiplies. And when God multiplies... He doesn't go by your mathematics. He doesn't go by the, the humps in the air. That's what they do now in school. They count humps. If you ever walk up to a register and they're counting change back to you and they're going, it's the new math. God doesn't do the new math. He's still on his math. He's not on your math. And he says, when I bless you, it's not just going to be a little trickle. It's going to be a pure outflow. It's going to be an outpouring that you are just going to be so blessed and it's going to pour out in ways that you never imagined. It's going to multiply. It's going to multiply and it's going to multiply even more. You have no idea, no, no idea what God's going to produce. Jesus said to the, to the sower, a guy who plants went out to sow some seeds. 
Some seed didn't just produce a single return on a single seed invested. Some seed didn't just produce a single return on a single seed investment. Jesus said some seeds produce a harvest at 30 times the return. Some seeds, 60 times the return. And some seeds, 100 times the return. A single seed is planted. And it had an exponential multiplying return of a hundredfold of what the seed was planted into the ground. One seed turned out 10,000 kernels of corn by one seed being planted. You have no idea what God is about to do in your life with one seed of faith planted into your heart. With a seed as small as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. One seed can produce 10,000 return. One seed planted in your heart. One belief. One bit of faith. One grab a hold of a miracle of God. One, I take that. One, I take that is going to multiply into your life. I need a healing. God says that I'm an overcomer. God says that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I claim that. My family is at odds, but I claim that God is going to bind us all together and we are all going to walk into church singing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the only name that I know. I claim that. You have been believing that God would do something, that God would hear your prayer. And God has. My life is in shambles, my career was busted. I had just been through the worst news I had ever gone through in my life. I got demoted from Walmart from my 10-year career as a store manager at Walmart. Sherry and I was headed down the road back to our house, not knowing what in the world we were about to face. We didn't know what was going to happen. We had started going to this little church, the Oak Park Church of God, I wasn't really into it. She was. She drugged me to church. I was still in the world. She was in the church. And we stopped by her, her grandmother's house, and Lord have mercy, this woman is a, is a, is a God-loving woman. She has a son that was a preacher. She has another son that he'll preach to me, and she has, a, she has another son that's an Assembly of God preacher. She is a woman that is filled with faith and loves the Lord. We passing by her house. Her mama just happened to be there that day, that night. And she said, let's stop in and talk to Grandma. I thought, Lord, have mercy. If you think that'll help, I'm up for anything. So we turned our car around. We went back to Grandma. And I walked in, and I was already devastated, and I guess she could see it on my face. And we started talking, and the minute she stopped, said, let me call the preacher. I said, Lord, have mercy. So the preacher come down there, and he's preached here before. He's loud. He's loud and louder and loud. And he came down there, and we were sitting there talking, and tears were coming down my eyes. And he said, why don't you just give it all to God? And I was like, because I don't understand all this stuff. I don't understand why you raise your hand up. I don't understand. I was blocking God because of an excuse we went to church finally I had nothing else to lose I said why not I made a mess of my own life why not give it to God I can't do nothing worse and I remember the day where I walked up onto that platform and I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and my life changed in that moment Everything, my drinking, my smoking, my cussing, my life changed. Did I stop the drinking and the smoking and the cussing? No, but I started getting convicted for the drinking and the smoking and the cussing. 
Because all of a sudden, God started rearranging my whole life. And my habits became changed. And what God did in me, I could not do in my own self. And what I saw as important, God showed me, that's not where I want you to be. I don't want you over here. I want you over here. Leave out of that country that you are in. Get away from the limitations that you have put on yourself. Walk out and see the glory that I have. In Genesis 15, he tells Abraham, because Abraham's sitting there still, God, I don't see it. I just don't see it. He He's sitting in a tent. He, got, he has walls around him. He can't see it because he's bordered with walls. You can't see it because you are bordered with walls. You have walls that you've got to get away from. You can't see the blessing of God because everything around you has got your vision uh, blurred. You can't see the glory of God because you're trying to see through human eyes. You can't see the glory of God through human human eyes. You've got to look through God's eyes. You've got to see a God-sized vision. And a God-sized vision, you can't understand. You can't fathom. You don't have any clue as to what God's about to do in your life. He's about to take you from here to here. And once he's done there, he's going to move you even higher. Where's God when I'm praying? He's sitting next to you, listening to you, trying to tell you, hold on, I'm working all things out for the good because I know that you love me. Hold on. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your visions. Kids, don't let people in school tell you how... how dumb you are for believing this or how crazy you are for believing that you hold on to your dream because you've got something that is worth holding on it's going to last for eternity i told jason and Paige, the friends you have in school you'll probably never see it once you get out of school i can't think of one or two friends that i ever see from my high school ever i don't know of any of them that even contact me on a daily basis weekly or monthly but I got a God that has stuck with me from the time I was born until the day I am right now and hopefully tomorrow if he doesn't come back and take me away I'm still going to have contact with him tomorrow but I've got to be able to initiate the contact with God and have a relationship with him and receive the word rehearse the word and live the word because that is what we've got to do we've got to rehearse the blessing every day God has promised me that I will have a child God has promised me that this job is going to come through God has promised me God promised me in the word that a healing was coming God promised me in the word that there is nothing that I will ever need or ever have want for because he will provide all of my needs according to his riches in heaven I won't ever have to struggle because God will always be there Rehearse the word. I'm getting, I'm getting done. I want you to remember, Sister Sherry, if you'll come on. If God always met all of your expectations, he would never have a chance to exceed them. He was ready, and they were ready. See, one thing that we don't understand is a lot of times that God doesn't bless us because we're not ready yet. When I wanted to come into the ministry, I asked the preacher, I want to do, I want, I want to do what you do. I, I don't know what it's called, but I want to do what you do. Two years went by, no answer, no application, no conversation. I patiently waited until I finally just had enough, and I said, where is it? When are you going to give me what I've asked for? When are you going to open up? When are you going to let me get in? He said, when you're ready and you're not ready. And God's telling you, when you're ready, you're in the right place. The time is now and you're the one You're in the right place. And when you get rid of your will and you can accept God's will into your life, 
He's going to make your name great. He is going to make your name great. Not you, him. He's going to do something in you that nobody else can do. When you get out of his way, he's going to deliver what needs to be delivered. When you finally give up and surrender, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word surrender, I always remember the blue lights that were behind me. For some, some reason, that's what surrender. I, I always remember it, and it's always so true. Because anytime the blue lights got behind me, the first thing they said was, put your hands up. Put your hands up and surrender. Give up your will. Give up your will. Because now you're under our authority. When I come into God's house, I don't see the blue lights, thank the Lord. But I do hear the same thing, surrender. Give up your will because you're under my authority now. It's not a bad thing. Why have we come to the place where we talk about giving our lives over to God and all of a sudden we become scared? You know why? It's because I'm used to my misery and I know what to expect out of my miserable life. I know what to expect out of my addicted life. I know what to expect out of my abusive life. I know what to expect out of the world. I know what to expect there. I don't know what to expect of God. You're asking me to give my life up for something I don't even know and I can't even see? It's got to be better than what you have. I can tell you now, it's much better than what I had. I would have never dreamed in a thousand years that I would be standing here in front of you today talking about Jesus Christ. No way in the world has anything in my mind. I thought I was going to die a Walmart manager. But God says, that's not where I want you. I got a different plan for you. And it's going to be more prosperous than where you are right now. You are going to be more successful than you've ever been. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to lift you up higher. You want riches? Give your life to me. You want blessings? Turn it over to me. Listening last night, we were at Brother Brian's uh, for a birthday party for Brother Calvin. And the girl that goes to, to um, Beulah was telling us a story about a lady who had come into the altar. And she was telling us that the lady came up and the preacher was praying for her. And the preacher said, listen, you got to be willing to turn your whole life over to God. The whole thing, just give it all to him. Are you willing to do that? You know what she said? No. I can't. I still got some things that I've got to do. She turned around and she walked out. Because she wasn't willing to give it all. God says you didn't. God's not necessarily wanting you to just give up your life. He said be willing to give up your life. That means if, if the car's gone, are you still going to praise him? means if the job's gone, are you still going to worship him? If the relationship falls apart, if the sun don't come when you want it to come, if the relationship doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, if the blessing and the favor doesn't come just like you want it, if you ride into the Walmart parking lot and you get the third spot instead of the first spot, are you still going to worship God? Will you stand up for just a moment? You have no idea of what God is going to do in your life. You have no idea what one seed planted is going to do in your life. You have no idea what God is capable of doing. Even 
if you've been in the ministry or in the church all of your life, you still have no idea what God is capable of doing in your life. And I'm not trying to put you down, but God is so much greater than our mind and our thoughts and our imagination. It doesn't matter how much you think you know God. God always has more in store. Don't think that you've ever reached the place where you know God fully and you know everything that he is capable of because God is greater than any thought that you could ever think or imagine. God is that much greater. And no matter where you are in your life, God wants to do more and more and more. There is a healing that is coming in your life. And it may not be a physical healing. Healing. It may be a, an emotional healing. It may be a healing that is something that has happened to you when you were young and young. Sister Sherry mentioned something the other day. And we're going to do this not too long from now because I had a vision when she said it. She said we ought to have a burial one day of everything that has happened in our past. And the thought hit me, bring a casket in, so don't get scared, and let everybody write down all their hurts, and I'm going to dig a hole, and we're going to put, it, put a close to it, we're going to have a funeral service for every hurt, every, every disaster, everything that has been holding us back from God, we're going to dig a hole, and we're going to bury it. We're not going to bring it back up because once it's gone, it's gone. We're going to put a sign over it that says, here lies my past. It's dead and gone. What you think? We're going to do it. So if you walk in here, if you walk in here one Sunday and you see a casket, don't get scared. It's okay. But this morning I want to ask you, are you willing to give it all to God? All of it. Whether he comes today or whether he comes tomorrow, whether you see his blessings today or whether you see it next week, are you willing to give it all? Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? I want to ask this one question first. Are you in here this morning? Maybe this is your first time and you first time to, to even think about knowing God. And you would, you're in here and you would say, you know what, I want to know that God. If that's you, and this is your, the first time that you've been in contact with God and you, wanna, you want your life to change, why don't you just lift up your hand right where you are? Father, thank you, Jesus. If you're in here this morning and you, you're seasoned and you say, you know what, I want to know that God. I want God to know I'm going to give him my all. Whether he does anything for me today, tomorrow, or next week, I'm going to praise him anyway. If you're in here, you'd say, yes, I want that. I want you to lift up your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you see every hand that's been raised in this place. And God, I ask you, Lord, God, that you touch every soul. Father, that right now, this morning, God, Lord, in this place, God, we give you our all. And Father, we praise you and we worship you, God, for everything that you're about to do, for doors that are about to open, God, for blessings that are about to flow, God, for relationships that are about to be mended, God, for homes that are about to come together, God, for, for children and for spouses that are about to come back to you. God, I praise you and I worship you in advance, even though I don't see it. God, I'm going to go ahead and worship you in advance for the miracle that is about to happen. God, I'm believing whether it happens today or 10 years from now. God, I know that you hear my prayer. God, I know that your word says where we agree that it will happen. So God, I'm agreeing and I'm believing and I'm, I'm having faith that your word will come true in my life. God, manifest the glory. Let the seed sprout. And Father, I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. 
Brother Junior, would you mind coming up here? It's so good to see you in service. Would you mind coming? Brother Dayton, would you mind coming up here for me, please, sir? Sister Sherry, will you step in for Sister Gail? I know there's a lot of ailments and sicknesses going on. And I know there's a lot of things that happen, and, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but I know that Sister Gail, Brother Junior, Brother Dayton have been through a lot in these last couple of days, weeks, months. And I'm believing that God is going to give us a, 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 a surefire miracle. Sister Gail, he's already given us a miracle in her because they didn't expect her to last very long, but she's stubborn. Praise God for her. She's stubborn. And I want you to believe with me that God is a healing God. If there's some of you in here that would agree with me that God is going to just deliver, I want you to just step out and come stand behind these. I want, if you believe that, that a miracle is going to happen, I already believe that God's taking care of Brother Dayton. He's taking care of all kinds of issues, his back, his heart. I believe that Brother Junior right here his arms are going to be free and he, is, and he is going to be released from the ailments that he has. I believe that God is going to work through every part of his bones right now. And Sister Gail, she has trouble breathing, but I'm believing God's going to help her in her lungs and God's going to help her and make her breathing easier. Will you help me pray? Father, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for what you've done in Dayton. God, I ask you to strengthen his body right now. God, strengthen his heart, God. Lord, just believe, bring him to a place, Lord, of strength. And Father, just bless his household. God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, I thank you for what you're pouring out. And God, I just give you praise right now that God, a healing is happening in Junior's bones. God, a healing is going through his arms right now. Father, that we claim that God, every sickness that is in him, God is gone. Father is delivered. Father, in the name of Jesus, and God through him and God's sister Doris, God, that you will heal that family. And God, everything that has been surrounding them, God, lift it up right now. And God, give it a healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I praise you. God, I claim a healing in Sister Gail. Oh, God, and right now, also in Brother Henry. Father, that these two will be healed in the name of Jesus. God, that breathing will be easier. God, that walking in Brother Henry will be better. God, that right now, Father, your touch will be upon them. Oh, God, have your way, Jesus. Lord, I praise you. And God, I thank you. Father, have your way, Jesus. I got one more. Sister uh, Frida. It was your uncle. We're going to pray for him. If you'll just lift up your hands, I'm believing that a miracle is going to happen in his body as well. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, you see him, God, that he's had these ailments, he's had these sicknesses, God's stroke, but Father, I'm believing that God for a complete healing in the name of Jesus, Lord, that a restoration is about to happen in his body. God, we are a body of believers that believe together that healing still happen. And God, we believe that, Father, that right now in your name as we stand here this morning, that, God, we believe that a full miracle is happening in his life. God, I'm believing, God. Lord, touch his body right now. God, let your will be done. Father, in your way and in your time, God, we give you glory and praise for all that you're going to do. God, we're going ahead and getting ready for the miracle. We're not waiting for the miracle to come. We're going to go ahead and prepare for the miracle now. Because, God, we know that you're a true, honest God. And we know that nothing goes past you, nothing goes beyond you, and nothing is out of your realm. So, God, we're believing and God, we know that a, that, a, that a true miracle is about to be birthed. 
don't let us stand in the way of the delivery of that miracle. And God, I thank you for all that you're doing right here in the Lenox Church of God. Yeah. Father, we don't, we don't just put up the sign that says God first. Lord, let us live a God first life. God, let us show everybody that we are true Christians that love one another. Regardless of anything, we love people, we love you. And Lord, if there's anything to be dealt with, we put it into your hands. God, we give you praise and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Will you give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. It's good to see you here worshiping this morning. Uh, hey, don't quit. We got tonight to go. Come back and join us tonight. Do you know we're a rare church? We have church at night. Amen. Come back and see us. Amen. And be blessed.